Hello, rock stars. Welcome to your February Team Rockstar Fit Live. I am so happy to come to you with our elite coaches for 2019. I'll let them unmute for a second and make some noise and be excited to join you. <laughs> That's awesome. I feel like we're all in the same room. I feel like we're all hanging out, even though we are in five different states all the way across the country, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Anyway, one of my favorite interviews of the year is always having the chance to talk to the top producers, the leaders, um, the people making things happen on Team Rockstar Fit. So I have some veteran elite coaches here with me today, and I have a brand new elite coach. So let me just dive into the introductions. And let me tell you what to expect today. You're going to meet these amazing women and hear their stories and their struggles and their journeys. We're going to talk a little bit about their fears, who they were before Beachbody, some of their personal struggles, what helped them. Then we're going to flip and talk a little bit about the business, some events they went to that really helped them, how they coach their teams. So in all of this that you hear, not everything's going to speak to you. Not every story is going to resonate with you. Not every tip is meant for you. So coaches, what I'm asking you is to be diligent, to take notes, to listen, because there's going to be one or two golden nuggets that can and will change your business if you're ready for it, right? I love setting the bar high for this because I've heard coaches say that they've listened to this elite interview in the past and they have led their business differently because of it. So let me introduce, I'll start with me. I am one of the elite coaches this year. So I'm the moderator and interviewing, but I'll also be answering some of the questions along the way. So I don't really need to look at my own notes about myself, but I'm going to try to go in the same order. Um, I started Beachbody Coaching in 2008. So I just celebrated my 10 year anniversary. I'm married to my husband, Jeff. I'm a mom of two. I'm the founder of Team Rockstar Fit, of which you are all a part of. I am a 15-star diamond in one business center and a 10-star in my other business center. I won the CEO award from Carl Deichler. I was a member of the coach advisory board, a seven-time elite coach, 77 months in success club. Wow. Um, you just make it happen. You just decide that it's what you do, right? Um, and then one thing people might not know about us, we're each sharing something of that. Um, I lived for a year in France. I really thought I was going to live there, but then I met my husband on a blind date when I got back at the age of 21 and I've never been back. So it's on my bucket list. All right. So let me introduce you to Julianne. Hello, Julianne. Um, Julianne started coaching in 2014. She lives in Northern California. She's married to Eric. She is currently a dog mom, but she is pregnant with a rainbow baby. And can I just explain for those of us that didn't know what that meant? That means pregnant with a baby after having had suffered a miscarriage. So pregnant with a rainbow baby due this summer. Um, founder of Team Happy and Fit, a seven-star diamond, three-time elite coach, 55 months in Success Club. One or two things people might not know about her. She's a black belt in Taekwondo what? <laughs> and uh, she just learned her husband's cell phone number after being together for 10 years. So that's, um, that's Julianne. Let me go to, uh, to Teresa. She lives in Wisconsin. She started in 2016. Um, she's married to Eric. She is a mom of two. She is the founder of Evolve Nation. She is a five-star diamond, three-time elite coach, same as Julianne, 37 months in Success Club, a Success Club 5 legend. Um, one or two things people might not know about her, she was a competitive gymnast for 14 years. Um, I lasted like three months in gymnastics, so that's wildly impressive to me. And in her second life, she says she wants to be a fashion and interior design blogger which basically your Instagram account already is that. So I'd say she's already hitting it. All right, then we have Kim. Kim Meyer is in Iowa. She signed up in 2015. She's married to Josh. She's also a mom of two, founder of Team Rise and Fit. Six-star diamond, two-time elite coach, the first elite coach ever in Iowa. Um, 42 months in Success Club, a Success Club 10 all-star. A couple things you might not know about her. I wrote it down. I'm not as hip as Kimmy, but she said she wished she lived in Stars Hollow and was a Gilmore girl, <laughs> okay, and that she wore corrective shoes for 11 years and still is such a rebel that she wears flip-flops. Okay, and then we have Darla. Darla Honey is in Missouri. She is married to Jason. She is a mom of two as well, founder of Transform Nation, 
five star diamond. She's on the market council um, in her region. She is a first time elite coach, 59 months in success club. A couple things you might not know about her. She's a, she drove a school bus on their kids' field trips. She had to have some special large vehicle license in order to do that. I was laughing so hard I couldn't actually write it down. Um, but anyway, so she drove a school bus for the field trips. She dropped out of college after, it's my drum roll, seven years. Decided not to finish it because I asked her to, set, to attach something to an email. She didn't know how to do that. So she's like, I'm out. Peace. <laughs> All right. So those are your premier or elite coaches, excuse me, for 2019 for Team Rockstar Fit. Ladies, welcome. We're going to dive into um, one thing that I asked the women before we got on this interview was tell me about a personal development book um, that was pivotal to you. So we know that this business is not just built on to-do lists and trackers. It's really built on personal development and growth and just truly believing that you're meant to be successful. We all agree on that. We'll have a chance to talk to them about it, but I just wanted to gather from them the most impactful books they've read. All five of us, all five of us agreed that The Compound Effect by the one and only Darren Hardy was probably one of the most pivotal books that we read because it was one of the first personal development books we read. It opened our eyes to realize that this is not an overnight success, but success is achievable by anybody who's willing to put in the daily work and grind in inches. So The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, if all five of us liked it, you might want to put that one on your list. Then I asked them separate from that, what other book or podcast has been pivotal to them? Um, I said First Steps to Wealth by Danny Johnson. It was, she is just really direct, honest, badass, and also just made me realize that, you know, it is okay to want to be successful and independently wealthy. She kind of makes it feel like it's okay. And I think sometimes women especially need to hear that. So First Steps to Wealth was helpful to me. Um, Julianne loved the power of positive leadership and has really helped her in her leadership of this team. Um, Teresa loved Girl, Wash Your Face. She said it was just very relatable to her. Kimmy loved You Are a Badass, just clearly because she is. And Darla loved, loves the Life Coach School podcast, Life Coach School podcast by Brooke Castillo. I would say that all of us intersect on a lot of those books and podcasts and um, would say that we have all read all of them. So let's dive in. <sighs> Julian, I'm going to start with you because I've been chatting enough. I'm going to start with you on the question of what personal fears have you had to overcome in this business to make it to where you are now? I loved this question. Starting off as a coach, I had to get over my present self, my present self that compared myself. I felt like life is always a competition against other people. And I had to get over just will, if I put in the work, will this work out? I had to think with my future self. I had to think of the six figure earner person I wanted to be. I had to think of the person that didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck because comparison and jealousy was a really big thing in my life starting out as I started my journey, just because that was my life. And I really lacked follow through before each body. And I had to work through that. And the way I worked through that was just taking massive action. And then throughout the last four and a half years, that stuff still pops up. But again, when I just have a vision and I just trust that the compound effect, that's why that book was so pivotal for me starting off as a coach is because Trina, you'll say this, it's the inches. Just trusting that taking action every single day is going to produce more than taking zero action. And I think you've also said you're, if you have fear either way and you're not going to do something about it or you are going to do something about it, more than likely something's going to happen. So my biggest thing was getting over my present self and just thinking about that future person I wanted to be. And that's even the same with being 35 pounds heavier starting off as a coach, or I don't have a big social media following. I had to get over that and I just had to work through that. Whew. Coaches. <laughs> I hope you have your notebooks and pens out. I usually say that at the beginning of this interview, that if you haven't already told your family, friends, dogs, kids, everything that you are occupied for the next hour, this is really your time to invest in yourself and your business listen to what the coaches are saying 
if you're a note taker, write it down because you want to be able to come back to this and let something light your spark. So Julianne saying that she had to get over herself and see her future self, see herself as the fit six figure earner, confident, not in the comparison game. That's not who she was, which we'll get into in a little bit, but she had to get over herself. That was one of her biggest fears. Um, and also her fear of just being bad on follow through and knowing that she had to change that habit if she wanted to be successful. Um, Julianne, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to go to Teresa. I think one of my biggest fears was definitely the fear of other people judging me. When I started posting on social media, when I had first signed up to be a coach, we were posting three to six times a day. That was just the recommended social media guideline, I guess, um, at that time, which thinking back, I cannot believe we all did that, but we did. Um, and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, all of my friends are going to be so annoyed with me. They're going to think I'm trying to push products on them. And I was just building up all of these stories in my own head when really with time, all of my friends have worked with me or thanked me for motivating them. Um, and that definitely came back tenfold. That felt way better than me telling me telling myself the story that people were judging me. Um, another thing that I really had to lead with was the fact that I was getting results and I really honed in on my own journey throughout this entire thing. And I think that is why I had so much success in the beginning right away was because I was laser focused on getting myself um, fully in, um, into Insanity Max 30 I committed to that every single day. I shared about it every single day. As my friends would ask me about it, I would just invite them to join me. And I just really don't think I had the fear of inviting because I was so passionate about what it, what this has done for me that I just shared it with people when they asked me. I wasn't overthinking, inviting people. Um, and I was just loud and proud about what had helped me get back into shape after having my son. So. And like Julianne said, those things definitely still creep up, but I feel like in this business, the compound effect gives you the confidence and just the, I don't know, hard skin that you don't let those things bother you anymore. And you know what this is capable of doing for people because you have experienced it and you've helped other people experience it. So keep going. Don't stop. Don't let those fears prevent you from starting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think while you were talking, every coach out there listening is nodding like, yes, the fear of being judged by people on social media. Um, and the, I mean, the thing that stuck out to me that you just said, Teresa, was that, you know what? They weren't annoyed by me. Eventually all of my friends let me either help them in your own challenge groups or joined your team or said, thank you for inspiring me. That shows you that she just stuck with it and put blinders on and didn't worry about how every post was landing. She just continued to post. She didn't have a fear of inviting because she was always showing her journey. So there was always something to talk about. There was always something for people to comment on. And so it was a natural conversation starter as opposed to just these random, will you join me posts? Like people want to see what you're doing. Um, that's awesome. You have been very loud and proud. And absolutely, that's one thing that's gotten you to this table today. So great. Let's go to Kimmy. All right. Um, I would say a lot of the same things, uh, feeling like I had to prove myself to someone, um, overcoming what people thought of me was definitely something from the very beginning. I mean, I started doing my workouts in the dark in my living room at way early in the morning. So no one would see me. I had the shades pulled on our bay window. So like people couldn't drive by and see what I was doing. Like, it was just like, this was a secret that I was doing this because I didn't want people to see me fail. Um, that I thought that I wasn't going to be able to accomplish it. And I didn't want to put myself out there right away because what if, what if I didn't, you know, like I let those fears, um, creep in on me. And then after I started to get my own confidence and other people started noticing what I was doing, you know, on the outside, cause they clearly didn't know I was doing anything on the inside. Um, I, then I started talking about it and like Teresa said, just being authentic and excited about what was coming up. Um, and really overcoming like the worry about what other people were thinking or worrying about like where, that I wasn't good enough. That's definitely my paradigm of like having that victim mindset of where I, where I've come from, how I grew up, like all those kinds of things that have always kind of propelled me forward, but also held me back in a lot of ways. Um, and so really overcoming that fear of failure and that, 
I am capable. I am worthy. I am, I can do all of these things. And personal development has definitely been a game changer. And, you know, you mentioned like my, my book was you're a badass and I didn't necessarily think it's because I am a badass, but I think it's like, it was just one of those things of like, it was like, yeah, like we can do anything we set our mind to. And yes, we can. I mean, it was just those kind of like realizations that, um, getting rid of fear because you know, fear is just, you know, the fake evidence appearing real. And so when you can get past that stuff and you can, you know, you know, live in your moment, you can, you can do anything that you put your mind to. I have goosebumps and we're like 10 minutes in. Um, Kim, I love that you felt like you had to prove yourself. You were worried about what other people thought of you. You didn't want people to see you fail. You're a high performer. You've achieved a lot of great things. Um, in life, you did well in college, you had a great job, so people were used to seeing you successful, and so you were worried, like, what if this doesn't work? I don't want to look like I'm failing, and you still, and you still did it, right? And you said you just showed up authentic, you stopped worrying about what other people were thinking, you decided that you are good enough, doesn't matter what your upbringing was, doesn't matter what kind of household you were raised in, or what kind of goals or values that was, like, you decided to create your own, which we'll have a chance to talk more about. Um, I love that you said that you just decided to live in, in the moment. Um, so those are awesome. By the way, I call her Kimmy. Her name is actually Kim, but I, I don't know. I've called her Kimmy since the day I met her. So if you message her on social media afterward and tell her she's super motivating, just call her Kim. <laughs> All right, Darla, let's go to you. Awesome. Um, so I think the biggest fear and it's part of my, my silly introduction was I had never done anything hard. I'd never done a hard thing. I, if something got tough, I was like, peace out, just like college. I was willing to put all that money and all those years I invested. I came up against something I felt incapable of, and I didn't have the confidence or the drive to figure it out. Like I, I, I just didn't have it in me to, to believe that I could do something and, and, and to figure it out. So I think, um, having to prove to myself really sometimes even on a daily basis, this far into the journey that, Oh, I can figure this out or, Oh, this is an obstacle, but, but I'm able to, to do hard things or I'm able to, to, you know, learn and, and uh, research and figure out how I want to move past this. So I think that uh, allowing those thoughts to continue to come back into my head sometimes is, um, a, a personal fear or struggle that, that personal development has helped and that I've overcome, um, through this journey, but it's definitely still tapping on my shoulder occasionally. Gosh, I didn't, I appreciate you bringing that back to the silly thing you shared earlier. It's not silly, but like dropping out of college after seven years is kind of shocking, right? Like it's a shocking statistic. But then when you connect it to, I didn't want to do hard things. I didn't expect hard things of myself. I had no confidence to see something through. To go from that to being in the top 003% of this company is a leap. Right. And we're so glad that you invested in yourself to do hard things. That's, that's incredible. Um, gosh, my answer to this one, personal fears I had to get over. I'll just share something that maybe hasn't been said. I think I had to overcome not just the fears of what people thought of me, but what people thought of this business and this business model. So, um, I, I came from a family where they wouldn't, they were not supportive of the idea of direct sales or network marketing. Um, in fact, they had a lot of judgments about it. And I just decided that it seemed like a good fit for my life, that I liked fitness and I liked helping people and this could open more doors for me. And so I didn't let kind of the judgments of other people in my life cloud my decision to join, but I did let it cloud my decision to tell others about it. And I would say that I stayed kind of in the closet as a coach for really the better part of two years where I just had to decide at some point, oh my gosh, being in direct sales is having a small business. It is having a small business without massive overhead, which I had experience with. And so there's nothing wrong with this. And really in our country, direct sales gets, gives a lot of women the opportunity to earn an income on their own hours and have the freedom that I really wanted for my life. And those things were more powerful to me than people's concerns about this business model. So I guess that's another fear um, that I think I got over. And I see a lot of nodding, so I'm guessing they're agreeing. By the way, feel free to unmute anytime. We're trying to keep the lines fairly clear and the audio clear. So we're muting in between questions, but if you have something you want to add to it, did anybody else have that fear by the way of, um, being involved in this kind of business model or what your family would say about that before it? Yeah, I felt I could echo that exactly. And I feel like the reason I had the fear is, was because I wasn't ed 
truly educated on how to answer that when people gave me pushback. I was just like, I love this team. I love that it got me in shape. I didn't think like of the business model because I didn't care about the business model. I just cared about what it did for me personally. So I think the more educated and the more research and the more searching in the coach online office you can do about products that we offer, um, the, the compensation plan, things like that, you will gain more confidence when you're talking to other people or when you ever get, you know, hesitation from people on certain things. Um, it was just a lack of education on my part that made me really nervous when people would push back and say, it's a pyramid scheme. Well, no, it's not. And Trina, I think you have like a very good explanation on how to tell people that it's not with correlating thing, you know, money with an item. You should share that. I really liked that. Yeah, I can share that quickly. And then it looked like Julian wanted to add too. So I did a video on this years ago because I was like, well, I actually would like to be able to answer my own dad on, is this a pyramid scheme? So I really actually need to know this, right? So it's illegal. And the Federal Trade Commission shut down all network marketing companies, old school companies that were still operating as a pyramid scheme. What is that exactly? Well, one, it's illegal now. So Beachbody was created way after the new rules went into effect. So they were never involved in anything that was not completely above board. A pyramid scheme is getting paid to enroll people, getting paid to sign somebody up as an old school distributor or whatever it was with no actual product moving, with no actual um, tangible item exchanging hands. It was just getting paid to sign people up. Right. And so, you know, you'd sign somebody up for $500 back then. And, you know, their sponsor kept half of that and their sponsor kept half of that and their sponsor kept half of that. Well, that all got shut down. Beachbody is created in the realm that the only money that exchanges hands is when somebody invests in a product. So that's a good thing. If somebody buys Shakeology, buys a challenge pack, gets Beachbody in demand, gets 2B mindset, gets performance line, whatever it is, whatever they invest in as a customer or a coach, there's products sold. We get paid a piece of that. We, they're basically profit sharing with us on products sold across the team. Instead of them putting all their money into trying to sell on infomercials, they're putting their money into us to be their advocates, right? So pyramid schemes, illegal. It's old school. Beachbody was created under new rules. We're only paid when product exchanges hands, not just for standing on the corner, signing somebody up on a team on a clipboard, right? So there's a quick, simple explanation, hopefully. Julianne, did you want to add to that? I did it. This is just unconventional. It's you're not signing a contract and guaranteed this amount of income. And I, when I first started, I had people roll their eyes at me in person, not even just mock me on social media. And the way I worked through that, because coaches, I'm, I'm sure some of you are dealing with that, is that would I want to trade spots with the person who's bringing someone else down? And the reason I signed up is because I heard a Zoom and it made me feel something. It made me feel more positive or encouraged. And to me, it was more than signing up for a business with products. It was joining a community of people that believed in me and made me feel a certain way. And I could build a business that didn't have a ceiling. And it's just delay results. But again, when I saw Trina and Sarah Morrison, the way that they felt, the way that they were living their life, the way that they made things happen, I looked at that thinking I could do that too versus the people who were telling me not to do this, who had never tried this, who had never been a part of this team, who don't even work out, who don't even take care of themselves. I'm not going to take their time. I love that. That you Would you want to trade spots with the person who's criticizing you? That's a really just great threshold to live by. Is this person who's criticizing your decision to be a coach or to be in fitness or to help others? Do you want, would you trade spots with them? If the answer is no, then move on, right? Okay, let's go into our next question. I know that a lot of you listening to this interview have met these women before in person or you've seen them on stage or you've seen them on calls, but it is always relevant to me for them to share who they were before Beachbody and who they are now. Maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't, maybe it'll land differently on you today. But the difference is quite stark and I want you to see that and see that potential in your life. So Julianne, who were you before Beachbody and who are you now? Yes, I call myself couch to coach. That's just the phrase because I literally heard about this opportunity when I was on the couch. It's kind of comical. And I just was a really hard working burnt out teacher that worked for $900 every two weeks. I was a part of the teacher talk. 
we would go out on Fridays, drink a lot of beer and just complain about our jobs. Like that was, that was my life. I, the, the people I associated with and socialized with were complaining and thinking small and just thinking about how life was hard and teaching was hard. And that turned into joining a community of people who are thinking bigger and making dreams come true, creating more freedom and building each other up and just finding the good in each day. And the comparison to that one, like this opportunity just gave me so much more hope with what I wanted to do in my life because I found myself sitting in my classroom after one day after school thinking about how men were getting paid more than me in the school that I was teaching at. I was busting my butt and I was exhausted thinking, how can I do this for the rest of my life? There's no way. There's going to be no way I'll have time for my family. And I love teaching, but when it comes to the politics and the amount you get paid as a teacher to pour into that, it just didn't seem worth it to me, especially because freedom of time to spend time with the people that I loved, that mattered most. And, you know, the freedom that this opportunity has given me in my thinking of what I'm capable of is probably the greatest thing. It's given me a community of people that cheer for me, bring me in their corner, elevate me, and vice versa. And the only way to really emulate yourself or immerse yourself in that community is jumping on Zooms is going to live events. Don't say that this, you know, you're, you're the odd one out. You have to put yourself in that position. I'm naturally an outgoing introvert. I'm a homebody. It's nerve wracking going to live events, but these women that are on this call right now have become some of my best friends. I've traveled all around with them and it's because I made a choice to put myself on zooms all the time. And I was 35 pounds heavier before starting this journey, which is so wild to me. And I hated fitness, but these programs, the fact that there's a plan, they fit into your season. I loved that I could do workouts anywhere to freedom of having no time to my husband and I literally traveling the world. We've been to England, we've been to Spain, we've been all over the United States, we went to Mexico, we're about to go on the cruise in March. We, and my husband is doing this full time with me now too. That's, I guess that's another thing is retiring ourselves as teachers living here in Silicon Valley. I, it's just almost like a dream life where is that even real? And I think, the best part about it is the peace that's in my heart of what's going to happen in my future is that I'm building something that's more than awesome right now. In 10 years from now, I'm thinking about not being able, um, not ever having to say no to my children if they want to do dance or if they want to do any kind of extracurriculars. I just get to say yes to them so they can experience life in the way that I didn't growing up. So I've changed a lot and it took time and it took trust but I captured the vision and I worked on myself, my mindset, and I showed up every day believing that someone like me could do something like that. I, I think sometimes when I hear their stories, I mean, I could hear her story a hundred times and it would um, mean something to me every single time. The fact that a burnt out teacher hanging out with complaining teachers on a Friday night could go from that to retiring she and her husband before the age of 30 to move to Northern California, to travel the world. And she works hard. She works hard in this business, but she has a completely different life. Julian, I'm going to move on, but I want you to touch on it because you said something. Um, you want to say yes to your future kids and their life in a way that wasn't your life growing up. Can you just give the quick on um, what kind of success did you see or not see around you growing up? So I come from what you would call a broken family, a divorced family, uh, my dad chose alcohol and friends over us, wouldn't come home at night. My mom decided to leave him. I remember we packed up a bag, one bag <laughs> each, and we left what seemed like in the middle of the night and went to an apartment and had nothing. My mom slept on a love seat for two years so I could have my own room and all of that furniture. That was our only furniture in the living room. And it was all donated. 
um, my brother and I say how amazing it is to open up a refrigerator as adults and see it full. It's just this like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. My mom is literally the best person in the world. So loving, worked so hard. And I can bring that to my family, but without that stress of writing a check at the grocery store, without cars breaking down constantly and electricity turning off. So I get to bring the love that my mom gave me through survival to also having my kids won't ever know that. And that is my motivation. Uh, that's my grit in this. And that's why no one can ever tell me not to do something because what is in my heart is the fire that's unstoppable. And I remember someone saying that to me when I first became a diamond coach. He looked at me, it was at an event in Madison, and he looked at me, he said, you're the girl on fire. And I said, oh yeah, like I, you don't understand what's burning in my soul because of what I've experienced. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I think that putting in perspective that before you were a super hardworking, burnt out teacher in inner city Milwaukee, you grew up with very little. Um, you grew up with a lot of love and very little um, financial security. And I think that that's been, you know, burning in you. Um, yes, thank you for sharing that. Let me go to Teresa. I know people like hearing that probably think, I don't have a story like that. How will I ever be successful? And I thought that for a really long time too. I was like, oh, I lost. So I started this business. I had gained 75 pounds during my first pregnancy with Parker, my son. And um, I, I hated my job. I had moved back to our small town in Wisconsin that I grew up in. I swore I would never come back. We have nothing. We have Walmart. And thank God our family owns a boutique with cute clothes because that's all we have. Um, and I just never saw myself here. And there's not a lot of opportunity. Um, and if there is, it's capped out pretty quickly. Like there's never been a point in my life seeing a job here that I'm like, oh my gosh, I want that job. It's always just like, I'll, I will be settling for this position. It pays decent. It pays the bills. I'll suck it up. I'll go to my nine to five, I'll come home and just continue that rat race for my entire life. My husband is on, he's a potato farmer, but he's on a couple of the boards for potatoes and he gets to travel often. Um, his family also travels often. And I remember having to ask permission to go travel with him and my family and counting the hours that I had accrued to be able to take time off and having to forego some of those family trips because I didn't have time off. And it's like, why am I working a job that I really am this unsatisfied in coming home, complaining to my husband every single night? He didn't understand because he works for his family and really enjoyed his job. So I just felt like a nag, really. I'm like, I, what am I going to do forever? I can't do this forever. It's, it's wearing on me. So um, I was actually approached randomly on Instagram, invited to a challenge group, loved the challenge group, loved the idea of it and decided to sign up to be a coach with somebody else, with Trina, because I just didn't understand. Um, I didn't really get how it all worked, and the person who had invited me to my challenge group didn't invite me to be a coach. So when I was like, I could be a coach, I started searching for coaches online. Um, I asked my personal trainer, and she said, I just heard Trina Gray speak at a conference that I was at. You should check her out. This is how you spell her name. I literally went to her Facebook page, clicked on her website, signed up to be a coach. She was on vacation and she got on a call with me New Year's, New Year's Day. Early in the morning, we were up at my family's cabin and I remember sneaking upstairs to get on a GSR, getting started right call with her. And we talked for like two hours. And on that call, I was still very much like, this is, this is going to get me in shape after a baby. Maybe I could invite a few friends to do it with me. I did not have a bigger vision for this business. I had no plans of making this my full-time job. I wasn't looking for an out yet. I was just very complacent and unhappy in my life. And this was something that finally brought me happiness. And um, I don't know, it's just crazy what it's done for me. Um, and hearing Julianne's story, like where it all began and thinking like, I don't share this part of my story, but like my parents got divorced my senior year. Um, I grew up in a bowling alley in an apartment above a bar. I learned to ride my bicycle in a bowling alley. I don't look at that stuff as having a horrible childhood or having this detrimental period of time in my life where 
maybe we didn't have what the other kids in my school had, but we were happy. We had a very good upbringing. Um, I went to college, but when I got home, I was just complacent and unfulfilled. And looking back, I think that's the stuff that gives you grit and you don't even realize it. It's the stuff that makes you want more and to be able to see that you're capable of more in your life. Um, and like Julianne said, never wanting to have to say no to your kids, um, not having to live paycheck to paycheck because that's just the deck of cards you were dealt. Um, for seeing that bigger vision, for wanting to travel and to be able to take your kids because after they turn two, their plane tickets cost just as much as yours do. I mean, there were things I wanted in our future that were not going to happen if I continued doing what I was doing. And one day I called Trina, I think it was a year into the business, and I said, tell me what I need to do to quit my job. She's like, tell me how much money you need to make to quit your job. I did, we talked through it. Um, and I quit my job a few months after that conversation and it was never in the plans for me. I just showed up every day and I believed in what I was doing and I invited people to join me and here we are. I love her journey so much. I have to try hard not to cry <laughs> when she talks. Uh, so many amazing things about it. Um, you know, we're going to move on to Kimmy, but what I hope you're hearing about all of them is that there are some great trainings on our team. There's some great um, trackers from Beachbody. There's great lessons to learn, but all of them are talking about their own grit, their own drive, why they wanted something in their life to be different, and how they decided to make it happen. Yes, they used all the tools that are available to all of us, but at the end of the day, Teresa saw something different for her life. Julianne saw something different for her life. And these other women did too. That's the piece I hope you're pulling from this. Um, thank you for sharing that, Teresa. Kimmy, what would you say the before and now? Oh, before I was afraid of what people thought of me, I was climbing and trying to prove to other people that I was worth something, that um, I was a workaholic in a lot of ways that um, were not healthy. Um, I grew, I'm at meager beginnings, much like these girls have talked about, but uh, like Teresa, like it wasn't a bad childhood. It was just a limited childhood. And I, from a lot of times, um, just being in that grind all the time, I've always, always felt like I needed to prove myself. Like I needed to like do more, be more, accomplish more, um, prove to other people that, that I mattered. Um, there are only 28 of us in our graduating class um, in school. So comparison was a real deal. And I think that really shaped who I was and why I felt like I needed to prove myself in a lot of ways. So when it came down to like the fears that we talked about earlier, um, I didn't want people to see me fail because, you know, I've, when you grow up in a, a small, tiny town like that, like you feel like you're in a fishbowl and like everybody just knows everything about you. Um, so I would, in a lot of ways, my whole life, I would hide the negative part of my life and just show the shiny stuff um, and try to be more, do more because I wanted people to see me as shiny and not the dull things that were happening. Um, and so this whole process of like, you know, working so hard to climb from, you know, college athlete to then a teacher and then moving up into a consultant kind of role, tag and technology, and then into administration. Like I always felt like it was like, yes, one more notch on the ladder. But like, I just kept losing myself as I did that. And like what was successful in other people's eyes was drowning me. And like what it, you know, I wasn't able to like be who I was meant to be because I was always trying to prove that I was something to somebody else and like be successful in their world. So um, now I would say after, you know, getting in shape <laughs> um, physically and mentally, um, really learning how to pour into myself. And I, I love the, the scenario um, from Rachel Hollis where she talks about like the glass or the vase that has, you know, this, there's water pouring into it. And in order to to help other people, you're always tipping yourself and pouring from, from that vase and trying, and then eventually that vase tips over because it reaches so far and it crashes and burns. And I felt like I was at that point when I started this, like I was grasping at all kinds of quick fixes and things that could, could be a change for me because I was so tired of what I was doing and just felt like I didn't have any more to give. Like my vase could not tip any farther. And, um, our, the daily scripture, um, 
recently for our church was talking about like, are the people that you love the most getting the best of you or getting the scraps of you? And my family was definitely getting the scraps of me. I was getting up super early to go pour into teachers that weren't necessarily showing up for the things I had to give for them. They were, I was staying late for meetings that people weren't necessarily caring about. And it was like, I was constantly giving, giving, giving and never filling my own cup. So like instead, if that vase stands tall, and lets things pour into them, which this community became like, there was a, there's always been a spark inside of me. And I can say that now, like looking back, like there's always been some sort of spark inside of me. And this community fanned that spark into a flame and has just been filling and filling. And now I can stand tall as that vase of water vase being filled with water and let things overflow from me and reach the people that are part of my world. Um, you know, like my family, you know, like the balls are always in the air, whatever. And like, there are times that my family still gets the scraps of me sometimes, but it's not all the time. And I get to be, I get to be more present with my kids. I get to be more patient. Um, you know, the, the things that I was initially the one that was changing in my life has overflowed into our whole family. I started working out. Josh is now working out with me. Um, it was that, you know, I'm alone in the living room with no lights on to now, <laughs> you know, going live on Instagram and people watching me to work out with him right beside me. You know, like it's totally different. But um, now I listen to personal development. He listens to personal development. He just sent me a text yesterday and was like, you need to listen to this podcast. And I was like, right. I mean, so like there's just our whole worlds have changed and it, it's it's just so crazy to think about what life was like then and what life is like now, simply because I was tired of being tired, tired of being stuck. And I needed, I needed to get back to physical fitness, which changed into mental fitness and all of the other changes that come into it. Honestly, they, they could each just take this whole time because they have so many amazing things to share. Can I love that you just finished with tired of being tired, tired of being stuck tired of your family, getting the scraps of you all the time. Certainly it still happens to all of us sometimes, right? Um, and then wanting success that looked like success to others, but drowning yourself, like really good visuals, having a vase standing tall, letting other people pour into you, um, getting out of comparison in the fishbowl over the small town and being a workaholic for people who didn't really care about what you were teaching or giving. Um, always wanting to climb a notch on the ladder to what you have now, which is just a beautiful thing. So thank you for sharing. Um, Darla, I know your story is different. Um, share your journey with them before Beachbody and now. Awesome. So, um, I, when I, we were going through our intros, I, I didn't realize that other than you, Trina, I've been a coach longer than everybody else on the, on the call. Um, I signed up in 2012. And uh, so it's, it's not been a quick journey to elite for me. It's been um, a, a C student uh, journey here. I remember when um, I had been, I had already been signed up as a coach and I wasn't really doing anything with it. And I remember sitting on the side of the bathtub with our kids in the the tub and my husband saying, I, we really just need you to earn like $11,000. Um, we've got to cover our house payment and, and my income is just not doing it. And that just, it could have literally been, you need to earn a million dollars for what that seemed like I was capable of at the time. We were in the middle of a recession. I had two little kids. I had no college degree. We had just moved 40 minutes away from every you know person that we knew. I just thought, how in the world am I possibly going to to do that. And um, I kind of landed backward in an aerobics class. Literally my, my sponsor in this business didn't, wasn't able to show up to a class one day and um, because her car wouldn't start and everyone was looking around and I was like, well, I'll eat it. And, and that's how I started teaching aerobics. So I was running all over the place, hustling, teaching 15 to 18 classes a week with my infant and my toddler. Um, my husband uh, was a police officer and they were on a freeze. So he was, he was earning at the poverty line as a police officer. We, we literally qualified for free and reduced lunches for my, for my child's school. And it just felt dark. And I, I didn't even have the time to think about, I can't do this forever. Cause I didn't have the time to even think that I was just like, Nope, got another class. Da, da, da. And I was a troll. I mean, I was constantly sweaty, constantly in workout clothes, just running ragged and miserable. And, um, when I kind of leaned 
into the products a little bit for my own personal use. And I sort of washed over me uh, the, the change in nutrition, the uh, ability to get my own workout in, the ability as a trainer to use some of these moves in my own classes, you know, a little bit of free in my own headspace. It just kind of started feeling like the, the, the load was lightened for me. Um, my first check with Beachbody was, I think, for $40. And you guys, whew, it felt, I mean, like hundreds of dollars. I was like, that's more than two classes. That's like me picking up two extra classes, you know, this week. And it was such a difference maker. Um, it was our Chick-fil-A money. So I'm home with these little girls all day long, and we couldn't even go to chick filet like people would meet and let their kids play in the play place and I was like I can't do that because I can't I can't afford to buy them anything there you know that's fringe money that we don't have so I couldn't even get out of the house to do that so forty dollars was freedom it was freedom it meant I could do something to entertain my children and not feel like we were prisoners in our own home or that we were incapable of even socializing you know with, with other people um being in that tight of a financial place um I guess I'd really never had really deep relationships with women but before. Maybe it's because I was in college for so long that everyone has gone and graduated before I was able to really, I don't know. But um, I was so bitter and jealous at other people flaunting their Chick-fil-A money, having their porch lights on at night, burning electricity for no good reason. I just, I didn't have it in me to root for or cheer for other people. I was just pissed. And I wanted so many material things um, and I know now that's because I couldn't have them. And it just felt like, you know, like watching people on Facebook or take vacations or do what in the world, you know, how are people doing this? Taking a vacation? I'm reusing baggies. Like it just, um, it felt very compressed, very, um, angry and, and unhappy. Um, so through, connecting with women and helping them in challenge groups and growing my team, sort of very self-serving, right? I had to help women and I had to cheer them on and I had to like be in their corner in a self-serving way, right? To grow my, to grow my team, to, to add to my challenge group, things like that. But it was almost a fake it until you make it. And um, even though I kind of hate that saying, it just put me in a place of having to be a champion for women. And then it became very, very authentic and, 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 um, and true and just putting my plate myself in a place of opportunity and growth in that area was was a real gift to myself and has you know now grown this beautiful community of people where we truly do champion one another and empower and love and and just shower each other in positivity regularly it's also obviously completely changed our lives um economically which has just been a, a, a godsend I, I think i shared on the very first call i ever ever had back when this was a conference call in the olden days i couldn't afford for my oldest daughter to to go to dance class and she was chubby little three-year-old with all her deliciousness and she wanted to do ballet and we did not have ballet money so um most of the studios will allow you to come and do one sample class you can come and try one class out and I would walk in there with my little chubby three-year-old and be there for our sample class knowing I was never going to sign up but she didn't know any different and she just felt like she was going to dance class so I'd sample one at this studio and then when she asked again we'd sample one at that studio and that's how she took dance as a little girl and now uh, you know just as Julian echoed I, I'm able to say yes to, to whatever it is they want to do to any field trip money or extracurricular money or anything like that it's um it's very painful to feel as a parent, like you're depriving your children of the things that they, they deserve. Not, not the brand name shoes, but just the essentials for having their, their best footing forward in life. So it's, it's something I'm eternally grateful that, that we've been able to flip the script on. What a story. I love all your journeys and I love how you each shared them and led us into some of the more difficult, darker parts of your story and not just all the shiny stuff, which I think sometimes we tend to only want to lead with. So I think that by you all sharing, people listening hear themselves in you and realize that like, oh, they've been broken. They have felt hopeless. They have felt the struggle of comparison or, or whatever it is that they heard and the jealousy. I appreciate you sharing that. 
um, Darla, I will never forget the story of your daughter and dance lessons. And I also remember you going to the checkout counter and getting declined on a debit card several times and having to leave the store and kind of how that felt as well. So as Teresa said earlier, not everybody, you don't have to come from a place of deep, dire need in this business. You are fueled by something, whether you're trying to change your current situation or get away from a current situation, there's something that you want different. Um, my story really of who I was before and who I am now was I feel like I've always been an ambitious person um, and this gave me a place to apply it. And I was really burnt out, tired business owner with two little kids um, working as hard as I could possibly physically work to the point where I got a rare monovirus. Not long before I signed up for Beachbody Coaching, a virus found really only in women in Africa. I was so depleted. And this came into my life at a time where I had no room in my life for anything else. Zero. But the person who invited me, I trusted. I knew I liked fitness. I knew of some Beachbody programs and products, and I had more reason to say yes. Um, so I didn't do anything with it right away, and that's another thing to just think about. Um, I didn't jump on it. I said yes, but I didn't. I sat on it for a while. Um, so who I was then was I was ambitious then. I'm ambitious now. I was buried then and quite unhealthy then and i am not buried now i am busy and full but it's by my own choosing that's a big difference in my life um i felt like i was hustling and grinding and couldn't see a way out um i had big dreams for my life of wanting to live on a lake wanting to travel i saw all those things and i saw that jeff and my current job wasn't ever going to get us there that there's too much expense in owning a business locally with lots of expenses and he works with the government. Sometimes they don't even get paid as you know. Um, and sometimes they make zero to no raises. So, um, I love that he loves his job and I love that I love my job, but I knew that our current jobs that we loved. So if you're someone who's not looking to escape a job, I wasn't looking to escape a job. We still both have our jobs right by choice. I was looking for more financial freedom than our current jobs are going to allow us. I wasn't unhappy in life. I just had bigger dreams. So that's my story, who I was, who I am. I had bigger dreams than what my current situation was going to create, but I felt like, why not me? Um, and so I hope that you hear a piece of that too. Let's go to, I'm going to combine this one because we addressed a lot of it but you could just kind of recap it for me quickly. In Team Rockstar Fit, I have shirts, we have slogans, we believe in these three things, fitness, friendship, and freedom, right? Those are three just tenets of who we are and what we do, right? So we want you to change your, you know, um, your fitness level and be the best version of you you can be. We want you to meet new friends. And of course, we want you to have more freedom. You've heard all these women talk about that. Julianne, just break it down really quickly, the you know, fitness changes you've made, the financial freedom changes you've made, and the friendships. I move my body all the time, and I love it. I love that my body is a machine. I love that it works well. I love that I feel good and have energy and sleep well. And that's a gift. Like, that is something that I, especially with getting pregnant, like, I didn't realize how much I needed. With freedom, man, there's so many freedoms. You lost, you lost 35 pounds as a coach, right? You lost 35 yeah. pounds as a coach. You've done tons of different fitness programs. Okay, cool. Sorry. Freedom. Obsessed. Yes. And I love that it's, it tells me what to do and I can do it from anywhere. I love that I can travel with my workouts because that would be a huge excuse that I would have right? Is, or the snowstorms or whatever it was when we lived in the Midwest. I just feel like these programs eliminate excuses and they maximize results. And it's just, it's incredible what we have. It is so incredible. And I'm so grateful for it. Freedom, that freedom of time. And, and I like what you said, it gives you a choice and an option. And I think that's, you know, for me, I didn't sign up to quit my job when I first started, but I had way more fun in this and more freedom in it and flexibility. And, and I was feeling things changed at church or at, at school. And so because of that change, I had an option. And so making $900 every two weeks to building this business that has given me so much freedom to live life on my own terms is incredible and it just keeps on compounding and if there's anything I love most about this business it is the people and the friendship and the collaboration because it's pretty freaking cool to 
to surround yourself with people who just want to be better. And there's something to that. There's something about surrounding yourself with people who work hard. There's something about surrounding yourself with people who want to level up, who want to celebrate other people and who they don't want to just find commonality in complaining, but they find commonality in dreaming big and ambitious and in working through their hard and not being a victim. And I think that that is what's so incredible about this is that we all experience crisis. We all experience hard. You didn't have to have a hard growing up, but we're all experiencing life <laughs> and life happens. But man, do I want to link arms with people who dig into self care when life gets hard instead of dig themselves into a hole. And this, I had been, I signed up to feel better. And I had no idea that it would literally impact every part of my life. And it has. <laughs> right. um, I appreciate you saying that. And lost 35 pounds, freedom of time, freedom of choice, having way more fun, life on her own terms. Didn't join this to quit her job, by the way, but has quit her job, has more than replaced your teacher income for you and Eric, correct? Oh yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fun when you know you start this off getting zero dollar paychecks to four dollars and ninety nine cents to hitting six figures and beyond and just it keeps on compounding and I think that's why the compound effect drove into my soul in this is that this is unbeatable, this compensation plan. And it's not we don't need nice things and all it's nice to have nice things, but we, like we're flying my mom to Florida because she's turning 16, I'm turning 30 right before our cruise. So we're getting there about five days earlier to spend time with her and then we're going to jump on the cruise. And we don't have to worry about taking time off. We're, we get to spend time with our family and then we get to spend time with our Beachbody family and my husband gets to come. It's just this, that wouldn't be a thing as a teacher. Things like that. Right. I love that you have that freedom that you get to take your mom. By the way, how cool is that? that your mom gave you so much love growing up and gave you everything she possibly had. And now you get to treat her to trips and vacations. And um, that's amazing. So if you guys caught that, I know that Julie and people are generally pretty um, humble about what they've done, but she went from earning zero as a beach body coach. You're probably her first check was probably around $30, right? To she and her husband collectively earning more than six figures. If you're listening to this beach body, I'm going to throw the disclaimer out there that there's no income guarantee in this business. You definitely earn what you hustle. Um, and so we know that, and we are showing that these women have definitely hustled. Okay. So, um, Teresa, the really quick friendship, fitness, freedom, anything you haven't touched on. <clears throat> I've definitely met some of my closest friends through this business, through the lead program with Beachbody. So if you hit Success Club, Beachbody gives you free customer leads. And one of my star diamonds on my team happens to be like one of the coolest people I know. Her coaches that she's brought on are also becoming very close friends of mine as well. It's just so cool that in this business, you get to choose your coworkers. And so if somebody isn't jiving with you or like you feel like, eh, maybe we're not a great fit okay, that's fine. Um, and you really, truly, if you show up day in and day out, you get to build a tribe of women that you absolutely love. And that's what we've done. Um, as far as fitness, I got into the best shape of my life using beach body programs. It became a lifestyle instead of a rat race. I was starting and stopping nonstop. Um, I would work out and then binge on Oreos. Like I just didn't know how to make it a lifestyle. And Beachbody taught me that through the nutrition plans, through BOD, and the accountability aspect of it kept me going. I, I'm kind of competitive. So seeing somebody else check in, I'm like, okay, no wonder they look amazing. Maybe I need to get off my butt and stop making excuses and falling off track again and keep going. Nobody at the gym doesn't like notices if you don't show up one day in the accountability groups, we notice. Um, and then freedom, like I said, freedom to travel, freedom to say yes, freedom to um, save more, freedom to do whatever we want, really, which is I don't know, just the most amazing thing. Um, and I remember when I took my job, my second job, I was working at the hospital, then I was a mortgage loan officer, and I was making 30000 a year pre-tax. And so in this business, as my income was growing, I felt like it did grow slower than other people's, but I cannot say how thankful I am for what this has done for me, for my family. I'm making well beyond that now. Um, and I love what I do every day. 
I just don't think that that's something that I will ever be ungrateful for. That's awesome. Got in the best shape of your life after getting 75 pounds in a pregnancy, choosing your own coworkers, learning how to eat healthy, using Shakeology, using the uh, nutrition tools, using the workouts, um, and more than pretty close to tripling your previous income, um, which is incredible. Kimmy, what would you say? I would say that fitness wise, you know, I've been an athlete my whole life um, and lost all of that and the stress of everything. So um, getting back into better shape than I was in college as a college athlete, um, really knowing what nutrition is like and learning from all the tools and things that we have at our fingertips, being a healthier version of myself for sure. Um, and then friendship. I was not a girl's girl in high school. You imagine like with only 28 of us, like there's 14 of us that were girls. Um, and I don't like drama. Um, I, I just try to distance myself as much as possible from negativity. So um, I, my best friend in high school was a guy. And so getting into this community, I was also kind of a little like, eh, a bunch of women. Um, but it's definitely not been that. <laughs> um, it's been so much amazingness and getting to know people and being best friends with people that live you know, all the other way on the other side of the country and, and getting to know all of you and, and the whole team and just building a tribe of people that fill you up. Um, and freedom. And, and I talked about a lot of this stuff earlier, but like there was a, a presentation at summit my first year that talked about all the freedoms. I think you, Trina, were one that speak on it. And like, see, I never really thought for myself either that I was going to be, have a freedom of people or a freedom of schedule or like those kinds of things. I just wanted freedom of the doubt and crap that was ho happening in my life. And so but through all of this, I have been able to um, leave my school administrative job and have freedom of schedule and freedom of time and freedom of people. And, um, you know, I remember writing a post that afternoon that I was at Summit, I'm like, what am I going to write about? And I was like, oh, I can't write about freedom of people because I'll never have that. And then I was like, but now I look at that, I'm like, that's so silly. Like, yes, I can have whatever I want when I, you know, put your mind to it. Um, and there's just so much that comes from it um, that it's just, it's been amazing. So. That's so great. I love it. You said it quickly at the beginning because we're moving quickly through this question to get to the business, but I don't want people to miss this piece that you're an athlete your whole life and you've gotten in better shape than you were as an athlete in college. That's incredible. Women, I was talking to my friend the other day about how many athletes end up joining this team. And so I hope that sparks some ideas for all of you. Why? Because they're generally very competitive people, goal-oriented people, have a lot of self-discipline, like to be on a team, like being a part of that. And all of a sudden you get into adulting and all oh, that's gone. <laughs> and this is a way to bring it back to people. Um, so Kimmy, I love that you uh, are a lifetime athlete who's in the best shape of your life now after two kids. Um, so Darla, hitting on those three, fitness, friendship, and freedom. Well, just to piggyback right, back right off what Kim mentioned, I, as I stated, was teaching 15 to 18 aerobics classes when I started this a week. And when I did the 2B mindset, I got to the first time in my adult life my, uh, to my goal weight. So adding in these, um, these programs and the nutrition component is what took me there. So instead of working out 18 hours a week, literally working out two hours a week and plugging in the appropriate nutrition for myself, losing weight happily. That was such a game changer um, for me. Um, friendship. So when uh, we had the diamond retreat this last year, it was, it was hosted virtually. So people had it where, wherever they were located. And I hosted the diamonds on my team, um, Lana, Tana, Sally, and Sarah and a hotel room. And we, you know, got the content and then spent the night together in this hotel room. And it was so much fun and so rewarding to be with these leaders who, you know, we've been running together for a year on online. And of course we talk and zoom sometimes, but just to be all together in one room, I literally pulled the cushions off the couch and went and slept on the floor just so I could be in the room with the rest of them. Cause I just didn't want it to end. I just didn't want to not be in there and to be connected and, and with them. It's just friendships that I value so, so much that I literally wouldn't even know them if it wasn't for this. Um, and then, of course, I talked a lot about the freedoms that this has allowed. You know, we're able to pay full price for my kids' lunch at school now, which is just 
super duper great. Um, and just the ability to, uh, my husband is a police officer and he was hurt and he has been home since the beginning of January to be able to take the doctor's appointments. My daughter happened to have a surgery to just to be able to be a mom and a wife at like full capacity when life throws you something that, that you never would have anticipated or expected to have the freedom to serve my family has been um, something I didn't even really see coming as, as it as it did here in 2019 for us. So I, I really value being able to put my most important role um, at the top of the list because of the freedom that this has offered me. That's so amazing. That's incredible. I, I very much relate to the teaching 15, 18 classes a week. <laughs> I love that you said the 2B mindset, the nutrition program, along with these workouts have helped you hit a goal weight that you never thought you could. Um, the diamond retreat, the sleeping on the floor and cushions. I see that visual and I love that. Um, okay, let me quickly touch on these three myself. Um, fitness, I, I got into fitness way before Beachbody. I got into fitness 20 years ago. I got into Beachbody 10 years ago. The nutrition has been the biggest game changer for me. Honestly, just the one thing is just Shakeology. <laughs> I love the fitness programs, but I also like teaching live classes. I also work out at my gyms. So I'm not an all or nothing Beachbody program person and you don't have to be. You have to be a product of some products and you have to be super strong behind them. So I love the Beachbody work. Workouts, they're not my only workouts, but Shakeology changed it for me. I was completely nutrient deprived. I was completely living on bowls of cereal at my gym at night, like carb overload. And I started drinking Shakeology. My funny story behind this is it's the only thing I changed. I was still super overworked. I didn't change my workouts. I started drinking Shakeology. One week later, I won a local triathlon and I don't like to swim, bike or run. Right. So I knew that it was freaking Shakeology and I started telling everybody it was kind of like this literally liquid gold for me. So I have been a hardcore Shakeology drinker since I came out 10 years ago. My family, my kids have been raised on it. Um, my husband as well. My parents, my siblings, like it is definitely a big part of our life because I believe in the nutrients. And that's my biggest part with the fitness. Um, I think I'm in good shape at 43, 43. Um, but I, uh, I think the Shakeology piece has been the biggest piece for me. Friendship, oh my gosh, people who know me know that like my closest friends in the world are really people that I know through fitness, whether it is through my health club or it is through Beachbody. These are the most positive people on the planet. These are who I surround myself with. I don't surround myself with a lot of people. I think that I am naturally outgoing, but personally pretty private. And I want to be around people who want to invest in themselves, want to believe in fitness. And I choose those people in my life. Um, freedom. I can tell you that I had a goal of being debt-free at the age of 40, and so that's kind of my biggest financial piece that I can share here, is that at 40 years old, I paid off um, with Jeff's help in this business as well, of course, um, all of our home debt, our cottage uh, mortgage, all of our cars, um, all credit cards, all school loans, and went completely debt-free at 40. Um, so that's pretty remarkable to be able to put money into savings, to be able to put money into my community, um, to be able to sponsor things locally and not worry about where it's going to come from, um, and start college funds with my kids, all of that. I never really envisioned that. My parents didn't live that way. My dad worked super hard as an attorney, and we got to take a nice two-week family vacation every year. I did not grow up in any kind of poverty. I grew up in an upper-middle-class family, but I didn't see extra. I didn't see extra, and um, I want that for my family and my life. So certainly we've, worked, we've all on the Zoom worked hard for that, but it's good to know it's possible. So let's flip into a couple quick business tips. I want you to go around and just tell me what's one thing that happened in the business that kind of lit your spark? Did you hear somebody speak? Did you go to an event? Did, what kind of lit your spark? Because not all of you started as people wanting financial freedom. So Jay, what, what lit your spark? Oh, I, doing Rock the Business when I first started as the coach and I dove right in and I heard a call that you did that this is the bridge to freedom and I wanted that. Like you showed me that that was possible. And there's been things throughout my journey, but that was, I took that seriously. That was a college course to me for free, but with the highest value, because look now, like that was everything to me. I love that you remember that. Um, Darla has to jump off because she has a daughter home with her who's not feeling well and needs her. So I, if you want to later when you're ready, 
text us a couple of those last answers. We will read them to everybody, Darla, but we've gotten so much from you already. So thank you so much for being on. I will finish with the other elite coaches. Thanks guys. I'm so sorry. No, we got a ton out of Darla. We're so happy. Go take care of your daughter. Um, Julianne, I love that you said rock the business because we just launched a new rock the business on this team recently and coaches who dive into that and listen to those lessons, they're going to do better in this business. And I showed a picture of the um, doc at my cottage and talked about that being a bridge to freedom in my life. And that's the lesson that you remember. Um, and I love that you were ready for it. Teresa, what would you say was a spark for you? I would also say rock the business was something that made me take this more seriously as a business versus just something that I was doing for myself. Um, but I will never forget, I was newly pregnant with my daughter, Jax. I don't think I had told anybody before and I just hit diamond and Trina held a retreat in Alpena in her hometown. And I remember telling her, cause as a diamond, I wasn't making a whole lot of money. Um, and the plane ticket to get to Alpina was like $700. And I'm like, I just can't swing it at this point. We're expecting another baby. Money's tight. Um, I'm not making a ton of my coaching business. I just don't think I'm going to be able to go. And she graciously gifted me a ticket. And first she just said, when's your date of birth? And I was like, uh, 12, 25, 86. And then she forwards me a Delta confirmation for my flight to Alpina so I went and I will never forget sitting around that round table in the hotel room, conference room, next to Ashley Mahaffey and Danielle Griffin. I didn't know really many people on the team. I was totally a fish out of water, but I sat down and they were talking about income. And I remember Danielle saying that she was a six figure earner. And I, I, I would have loved to see my face because that wasn't even in my train of thought at that point. I'm like, excuse me, what? Like just being surrounded by people who have paved the way for us. Our team is amazing. We have so many successful coaches on this team that are so willing to help. Um, the resources we have, everything. This team is just amazing, so giving. And there hasn't been one person that I have met through this on this team that I don't love. Like it's, it's remarkable. So that was the pivotal point is just – putting myself out there, being brave enough to get on that flight and go with a brand new baby in my belly I didn't tell anybody about yet. Um, and just trusting the process and really diving in with two feet and going to events and being fully present in trainings and stuff like that when they're available. <laughs> ah, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate hearing that. And, um, you know, on the flip side, like what she was thinking versus what I was thinking back then, I remember wanting her to be at this retreat and be around the people that I knew would help influence her. And I knew it's where she needed to be. And the fact that I got on and bought that ticket, thank you for referencing that. But the, I did that ticket without thinking twice and without having to get permission from my husband or without having to worry about a bill, like just saying, this is someone I want to invest in and I can. And so I will. And that's something super powerful that we can do for people because you can you can. And I, you were somebody I wanted to invest in. And I love hearing years later the impact that had in your life. And I appreciate that. Um, Kimmy, what was a pivotal point for you? Um, I would say in a lot of the ways that these ladies are talking about live events, like live events. If there was um, anything that has really shown me, I'm a visual person. So it's being there, it's seeing it, it's hearing it, it's being shown the way. And there's so, I mean, all three of you on the screen, Darla included so many people on our team that have shown up and shared that is what's really done it. So like, I would say if I went back to like two very specific things, it would be watching the summit opening ceremonies um, from my living room and feeling like, why aren't I there? I'm going to be there next year. And then being in the seats the next year in the nosebleed seats and thinking, I'm going to be on the floor the next year. Um, and then from those nosebleed seats, also like being a diamond coach and then going to that Beaver Creek, making it work in our schedule and just getting there. Um, I remember specifically standing after the first day of training in the gorgeous Hallmark card type like <laughs> facility, <laughs> like it was just gorgeous. Um, not really believing that I was really there, but then I remember standing in the foyer area and grabbing a hold of Julianne's shoulders and saying, this is what I want to do. And like, it was just one of those moments of like, it's, this is it. 
And it's all come from live events and thinking about to like summit the, that right before that, like sitting around the table with those women and really just getting to know them. And like, I remember going live on my Facebook right after we had pizza <laughs> skip the opening the closing ceremonies was that like I was just going live and I was sobbing and talking about how amazing this whole thing was and people were like messaging me like are you okay are you fine like like I was away from home and like crying on Facebook <laughs> and, like it was awful but it was good <laughs> and it was so I being connected and being in community and and listening and following the success leaves clues and you know going getting connected is what I would say what lit my spark I love it. I love the live events summit. So everybody on the zoom summit is in Indianapolis this year. It's a beautiful city. It's safe. It's clean. It's nice. Um, it is economical. You can share hotel rooms, try to get yourself there. And then what Kimmy is referring to as our leadership retreat, um, team rocks are fit. I host a leadership retreat every fall. It has been super pivotal in the lives of many people to see themselves at a place or with people that they didn't even envision they could have in their lives. Um, and so get yourself a seat at that table. That is for diamond coaches on our team. Um, I'm going to skip what lit a spark for me just to get to the last one we're going to finish with is, can you tell the listeners what's one piece of advice that you are sharing with your team right now that would encourage them to dream bigger or to grow? Like what's one piece of advice that you are giving or coaching on right now, Julianne? All roads lead to coaching. That, that it's the ultimate place to be the lifestyle and every invite you have always goes to how to join this team because Think about what we're talking about. We're not talking about this with challengers. Challengers aren't experiencing any of this. And coach to self, coach to others, however you say it, that they need to be a part of this because you never know what will happen. And this is such a gift to give them. And lastly is her success is proof you can do it too. So when you're listening to all of this, I heard people talk like this when I first started coaching and I believed if they could do it, I could do it too. So please let me say that to you right now. Those are awesome. Coaches, when Julian says all roads leads to coaching, and you got to really think about that depending on where you are in the business right now, what we really mean is not, honestly, it's not to go to the mall and sign up every person walking in. It's for every meaningful conversation you have with someone about their health and fitness to know that the greater impact will be if they become a coach. If that's the right person for you to work with, it is better for them to eventually be a coach. So be more invested in their own long-term health and fitness. They'll be a part of a more positive community and they will have the potential to earn an income should they choose to. Um, and that has been radically successful for Julianne. Um, so Teresa, what are you sharing with your coaches right now? Right now, the big thing that seems to be being talked about a lot is authenticity and sharing your journey. I see, and I have done this myself, a lot of people just sharing your workouts, your shake your workouts, your shake, your workouts, your shake. And if you think about the people you follow on social media or watch their stories, if you're seeing the same exact thing every single day, don't you swipe past because you already know what's coming. Really try to hone in on who you are, who you were before, what changed, who you are now. And also just opening the gates a little bit and be letting people feel like they're your friend on social media versus just someone who works out and drinks a shake. There's so much more to you and all of us have a story inside of us. You are the only person that is you. So if you feel like what you have to share isn't valuable or nobody cares, they do. Like I have Hashimoto's. I share about that. I have a um, new Frenchie puppy. That's a terror. And I share about that. <laughs> I share my kids. Um, I mean, just be more authentic to yourself. If this business feels hard for you, it's because I guarantee you are just being really, really surface level with your journey. That's great, great advice. And does not come naturally to people as a coach to want to open the doors and share anything about their life because they think, why would anybody care? I'm not a Kardashian. Well, cool thing, you don't have to be a Kardashian to have things to share. You can just have a Frenchie puppy and just share about what's happening in your life. People want to connect with you as a human being and not just as a fitness person. And I think that's kind of the, the way to recap that. People want to connect with you as a human being. Um, okay, Kimmy, what, would you, what are you sharing with your team right now? Well, three things I wrote down pre before this were be consistent, be authentic, and be a role model. And the, earlier this morning, I shared um, in the Diamonds a lot of stuff from John Maxwell that 
is on my heart and he says commitment is another name for success. And so when you are committed and you are consistent in what you're doing, whether it's your own journey with your fitness and nutrition or you're sharing your story and being authentically you, um, that's definitely something I've been doing with my new coaches when I do a GSR is tell me your story. Now let's rewrite that in your, in your opening post, in your um, invites to people because when you can be authentically you and why you love this when you're inviting people, it brings a different kind of energy and a different kind of purpose and passion that people want to be a part of it with you. Um, and just visualizing what you want and going after it. <laughs> so good. You know, and we make it sound simple and we know it's not, but the simple piece really is if you enjoy this community, if you enjoy fitness, if you enjoy these products, if you enjoy this company, we just tell people about it every day that you possibly can. Right. That's kind of it is like we have done something in this business pretty much every day that we've been in it, whether it's just having a conversation in person, posting on social media, doing an invite. If it just becomes part of who you are, it will grow. You can't keep it on the back burner like I did for a long time. You can't hide it in a closet like I did for a long time. You have to just hold this out in front of you and say, this is a big part of my life. and I'd love for you to know about it. Right. Um, what I'm coaching my team on right now to finish, I would say one thing that I'm passionate about um, that maybe is a little just different take on this is that you own a business. You own a business no matter what degree you have or don't have. You own a business no matter what your background is, no matter how smart you think you were or are or aren't. You own a business. And it's so fun to finally just get to act like it right? How do you act like it? You learn about it. You learn the compensation plan. You learn where the money comes from. You, you start to learn about the team, right? It doesn't mean that you have to have a degree in business. I certainly do not. You don't have to, um, you know, wear a suit every day and sit in a boardroom. Clearly we do not. But owning a business means that you have a stake in your future and that you are the decision maker in your own life. And to the women I work with, especially, I really want you to know that. Be proud of the fact that you own a business. Show up as a business owner. Be proud of what you have and tell people about it. Hi, 10. Across the board, ladies, you did amazing. It's been so fun to share this time with you. Coaches, if you're listening live here in Team Rockstar Fit, um, we are about to go to trivia. It's going to blow up. I need to know what you learned from these women. So go in the Team Rockstar Fit Facebook page. I'm going to throw down some trivia questions. I will send out prizes. Ladies, congratulations on your journey. Thank you for your time, your energy, and your expertise today. I love you all, and I hope you have a beautiful 2019.